Welcome back to Coffee Time. Um, today we're going to look at an app that has just come out from TechSmith. If you're familiar with TechSmith, you know that they make Jing, they make Camtasia, they make a number of uh, video tutorials uh, software. This particular app called Ask3 I think has fantastic potential. It's not fully developed as far as you know, they're adding more features to it as they go along, but the beginning of it is really, really awesome. And so we're going to take a look at Ash 3 and um, have a cup of coffee, pull up a chair. We'll spend a few minutes and look at a new app. Okay, so Ash 3 is a new app from TechSmith, and it's based on the idea in the classroom of Ask 3 before me. So it is a video tutorial to help you flip your classroom, somersault your classroom, whatever it is you're doing to put instruction online. And it allows you to create a, a short video tutorial that you can pass out to kids in the class inside the app. They can watch the video and then they can ask questions about the video inside the app. So let's take a look first of all and see what it looks like. And I'm going to uh, sign in as a teacher. I've already set up an account. I have two options here. I can either sign up or sign in. And, and all it needs for the teacher is an email um, and you set up a password. When students log in, they will need the uh, class number or code that's created. They do not need an email address. They simply need to sign in with your code. So I'm going to click sign in and uh, I'll go ahead and type this in. So this is what the interface looks like um, in the class after you've created it. You'll see that I have three options here. One is that I can create something. The other is the bulletin board where after I've created it, the video is stored. And then at the bottom is the class. And you'll see if I click on class, uh, I've got two students already loaded in that will come in and, and operate here in a little while, Bobby and Timmy Childers, um, you know, they're, they're twins. So as I go, I hit the back button to go back, creating something is just this simple. Now, this does not allow me to pull in video. This only allows me to pull in images and then write over it. I could, if I was a math teacher, I could just simply select the, uh, the pen tool here at the bottom and I could write 3 plus 3 equals X and I could begin to spell out things and down here in the bottom right you'll see a clear button I'm going to clear that off what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in an image because I've been doing some tutorials on um, uh, how to take better pictures with my students and so you can see I'm going to use two fingers here to zoom I can zoom I can move it around the screen wherever I want it to be. And I just want this to be sort of in the middle here where I can get to it. And I'm going to click done. And here's the image. And you'll see that the image is static. I can write over it. So if I were to uh, talk about this image with my students, I might uh, make sure I'll just click the, the circle button down here and I will tell them that I have a section of the image in the foreground that's in focus and it draws the eye to the image and then I'll click the square button and I could say up here at the top I have this section of the image blurred and out of focus um, which also helps to draw the eye in toward what it was that I wanted to take a picture of again I can hit the clear button um, and then I can uh, select the arrow tool so that if I wanted to draw something in with the arrow on it, I could do that. And I could go through explaining everything that I wanted to do and I would create that video this way. And uh, we'll see what that looks like once the students log in. Um, it's just as simple. I'm going to click um, to create and I am automatically uh, videoing everything that's done here. And when I'm done, I just click the uh, up button or the done button and and the video is is ready so I'm gonna make a video I'm gonna have a student sign in we'll see what the student sees and uh, and we'll go from there 
So I've created a video and I've logged out as the teacher. So I could hand my iPad to a student in class if I only have one iPad in the classroom. Or in our school, we have a one-to-one -one environment, so students can log into this from anywhere they want. And they're going to say, I'm a student, and um, I'm going to log in, first of all, as Timmy Childers. And we'll let Timmy watch the video. We'll be right back. All right, so I'm logged in as the student Timmy Childers, and you'll see that it looks exactly like it did when I was logged in as a teacher. I can go down here and I can see the members of the class. I can see the class code um, that I used to get in. So if, I, if, if my math teacher is using this, I have a code for the math teacher. If my English teacher is using this, I could have a different code for the English teacher. Whichever code I use to log in is the class that I log into. And if I click on the bulletin board, you'll see that I have two videos here. Now, this demonstrates one of the drawbacks right now of the app in that I do not have the ability to delete this little seven second video that I created when I punched a button to show you how it worked. So that will always be there. The other thing that I did not do, I have the ability to name these videos and I did not do that either. Um, so, you know, you have to kind of get used to using the interface, but I'm a student and I'm going to watch the video. So let's say that I get over to this part where I've talked about depth of field and the student does not understand how we did that in the depth of field app. And the student can simply make a comment here that says, I don't, don't understand. Und und understand. Oh yeah, isn't that nice? Okay, I don't understand how you got the app to do this. And I have now created this little note. Now you'll notice it comes up in the timeline at the bottom and everyone who logs in to the class will now see that there is a note here somewhere in the video. And so um, we can we can then let the other students log in and they can answer the question before I have to come back and answer all the questions. So I'm going to log out as Timmy. I'm going to log back in as Bobby and we'll see what Bobby has to say to help him out. So I've now logged out as Timmy Childers and I've logged in as the student Bobby Childers. And you can see now when Bobby comes in to view the video, he not only sees the video, but he sees this little box down here at the bottom that says somebody has a question. And so as he plays through the video, if he wants to, if he wants to see what that question was, maybe he has an answer, then he can just click on that little box and it automatically puts everything in the timeline to that spot. And Timmy says, I don't understand how you got the app to do this. And so Bobby, Bobby's going to click on the line tool down here and Bobby's going to say, um, he's going to create a video that says this section in here was created in the depth of field app by uh, selecting this area here in the app and then blurring everything else. And so when you look at the app, look for that little blurred section. Okay, so Bobby has created his little, his little answer. He's going to upload that answer so that it's stored. Now I'm going to come back in as the teacher to see what my students have been up to. All right, so we're back in now as the, in the teacher mode, and I'm going to click on the bulletin board. Here is the video that I sent to everyone, and I see that someone had a question. And so I can tap on this little box down here and it brings up the fact that Timmy Childers asked this question. Well, Bobby Childers did something to answer it. I can click to watch Bobby's answer. And if Bobby got it right, I could just type in a note that says, that's, that's great, good job. I could type in a note that says, Timmy, did you understand what Bobby was telling you? Because he's exactly right on. I could create my own uh, video response by clicking the little icon down at the bottom 
And once we have three comments, then that comment is complete. Now that doesn't mean that somebody else can't make another comment somewhere else in the video. But Timmy's comment, he has three options of somebody to answer. He has asked the question, two responses to answer. So it's ask three before me. I think this has tremendous potential in the, in the classroom for teachers who want to create short, quick videos to introduce a concept, especially something like math or art or even English, um, maps and social studies and how to read map keys and those kinds of things. Very quick two or three minute tutorial. Send it out to kids, let them log into the class, let them see the video. If they have questions, ask video, ask questions. And if the teacher doesn't see any questions, then that teacher could assume that everybody understands what they saw and, and go on from there. And then it won't take very long for students to say, you know, I should have written something in that app and done something differently. So that is the Ask3 app from TechSmith. It is free. Uh, it takes an email for the teacher. The students can create their own account without an email. All they need is the class code that's generated from the teacher's class. Right now, the limitations are you cannot, Im you cannot import video. It has to be a still image or handwriting. Another limitation is you can only create one class. So for a middle school teacher with 135 to 150 kids, that could be problematic. Um, you might want to just try it out right now with one class of 20 or 30 kids and see how it goes from there. So if you have questions, leave them in the comments section uh, on the YouTube channel, and we'll see if we can get back to you.